All right, welcome once again to an exciting episode of Georgia Business Radio with your host here, Rich Casanova, in our beautiful new PBC studios. That's uh, the Pro Business Channel studios in Buckhead. And um, we have some folks in here joining us on the show today. And although we're in Buckhead, ironically, uh, maybe we should have drove up to Johns Creek because they both uh, drove in from Johns Creek, Alpharetta area. And um, let's go ahead and welcome our, our first guest. Um, we will be joining us a little bit later in the show uh, in the studio. And uh, welcome uh, David Eads to the show. Hey, Rich. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Good morning to you. And uh, so easy commute, I heard, right? <laughs> yeah, shockingly. First time in 15 years. Right. Y'all should have jumped on, uh, shared an Uber or something. Yeah. yeah. Maybe on the ride home. Yeah. Um, so you're here speaking to us today about grow solutions. That's right. That's Give us right. a little teaser in um, uh, what we might be chatting about. Well, we're one of the fastest growing businesses in Georgia, and we're focused on helping banks uh, sell products to customers and, and, and help them grow. Nice. Well, um, uh, it's, and, and that's not a play on words that you just happen to be growing <laughs> and the fastest growing. I have yeah. a hard time not doing that. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah, speaking of banks, we've had a couple of folks in here from the Small Business Administration. And um, actually, they're thinking about kicking off a show, but the, um, uh, we originally had them on. They had raised about $8 billion in capital funding through the banks and through their service providers. Uh, now they're up to $20 billion just for the Southeast. So I don't know if you're on their short list or if that's a, um, is that something that uh, uh, y'all look to work with or do you kind of more help the banks? You're not necessarily. We help the banks. We provide software to the banks okay. and credit unions as well to okay. help them attract new customers. Okay. Well, maybe there's a partnership in the works. We'll see. Uh, Absolutely. But remember, always get 10% of whatever deal. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so welcome to the show. We look forward to your conversation and um, hearing about how you're helping uh, uh, the banking industry and those people uh, providing those services. But uh, first to our show, uh, I want to welcome uh, Christina Sims. And um, uh, your business got my attention right off the bat, School of Rock. Yes. I mean, uh, uh, finally, you, you bring any musical instruments, we're going to hear you sing a tune, or oh, um, that's not included yet. <laughs> <laughs> that's an extra charge. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, no, we're uh, located in Johns Creek, performance-based yeah. music school, so we do things differently. Okay. And I went to your website. It's uh, it's very engaging, and it's a franchise business, which is uh, and we we may have you back on a future episode for franchise business radio. Awesome, awesome. Okay, yeah. 170 of us in uh, nine countries and over oh, wow. 20,000 students. What are a couple of the countries? Um, uh, uh, I know, I uh, I know the owner of the Australia school, one of the oh, Australia wow. schools, uh, Canada, uh, yeah, yeah. Mexico, Argentina, um, and then Southern Canada, which is the southern. U.S. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I just heard yeah. that the other day. It kind of <laughs> cracked me up. I'm going to be using that for a while. Um, so a little bit about yourself. So you began tinkering uh, with family, the piano, singing solos, participating in choirs as a young uh, child and that, um, uh, and you learned how to play, uh, well, from vocals to piano and violin. Yes. I wanted to play violin ever since I was little. Um, so played a little bit of that, uh, you know, later on in life in college, drove my, uh, my uh, roommates insane right. <laughs> trying to learn that. But yeah, I just, I wanted to do it and didn't get a chance to until later. Every time I try to learn how to spell uh, voila, voila, I end up at uh, violin at, the, at Google search, right? Because there's oh, yeah. a couple of letters difference. But um, okay, so now, um, so you brought, you know, this um, uh, idea under the School of Rock um, umbrella to Johns Creek. How long ago? Uh, we've been open for 16 months, okay. and my husband and I moved here from Chicago two and a half years ago. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. And so, um, what originally brought you to Atlanta? Um, well, he worked for a company that where this is one of his territories, and okay. um, this this concept school of rock is something we wanted to do, and the territory Johns Creek was open, and so we moved here to do it. And had you heard about it in Chicago or something? How did you? Originally? That's correct. It's pretty big in Chicago. Oh, okay. There's a, ten or eleven schools in the Chicago area. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but you also hold an MBA from the University of Colorado Denver, a BA in Economics and Communications. Um, pretty extensive background, and like, and you're um, co-owner now with your husband Ben, longtime supporters of the performing arts and golf enthusiast. Yes. Wow. And you got to, uh, it says proud mom of two little rockers. I do. I have a four <laughs> and a five year old. <laughs> nice. So they pick up the instruments. I mean, that's. They do. Uh, I mean, what a great household to be in, because uh, they talk a lot about intelligence and early on. Uh, adopting music, right? Correct. And the arts? Correct. Yes. Um, it's funny. My, my older son, Jack, he's five, and it's amazing how quickly he's picking up concepts, um, even more so than some of my older students. Um, just listening, uh, maintaining a beat, things like that. Right. It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty interesting. He might be you know, one of those kids. And it's like sports where you have that discipline and that routine, and that continuity, mm -hmm. right, can uh, carry you uh, 
quite a bit further in life. So it says you're also a veteran of a professional services industry. Talk to us about that. Uh, Yes. So I've worked with banks and law firms in their marketing departments to help forward their business development marketing initiatives. Okay, so you might team up with David here and um, uh, <laughs> your, your banking uh, background and working with them. Um, so why Atlanta and why specifically Johns Creek for a music school? Um, well, like I mentioned before, um, my, one of my husband's territories was here, and so it just made the transition easier down here, and the territory was open. So, uh, And, um, you know, we, we love this area down here. Um, we have frequent visitors of Hilton Head Island when we okay. lived up in Chicago, and um, we're just, you know, now only like five, six hours away from, oh, yeah. you know, a vacation <laughs> point that we, we really love. And, and we, like I said, we're both golf enthusiasts. So this was a mecca for us to come oh, down yeah. here. Yeah. Both of my little boys also play. So. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty yeah, it's, active uh, family there. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're busy. You ever get up to Top Golf? Uh, yes. Yeah, that I is so fun. I still have Alfreda. not made it yet. Oh, it, what's awesome about it is you don't have to be a golfer to, that's to what, do it. Per, that's what I hear. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I hear they're opening one, I thought, near Buckhead, but I think it's Midtown or somewhere uh, down this way. But it uh, seems odd because it seems like you let a lot of acreage. It does. Have, right, uh, it does. It requires a, – it's a giant driving range. I think what they do in Buckhead, they're just – you just golf from one building on the rooftop to there the next, go. right? Yeah, no, no, no. So that's what they should do. They should just buy roof space. <laughs> And, and, and top golf with a big net. And yeah. To make sure they catch big everything. net. And then it's like a slinky thing where it just bounces back to you. Yeah, that'd be real. Yeah. I'm sure that would that would go over well. Um, so meanwhile, back to School of Rock. Um, what, what keeps you motivated? What kind of inspires you on a day-to-day basis uh, running an operation like that? Oh, seeing what, what we do to people in, in regards to just transitioning them from, you know, they, they come in and they want to learn an instrument. Right. And they, they, they leave with not just the knowledge of music itself, but just being more confident, engaged individuals. Um, when a student comes to me and says, oh, I can't do that, I look at them and I go, I don't know what that word means. <laughs> right. So, nice. and, and yeah, they, it's, it's a community. They come in. I have students that just want to just hang out. Right. They just come and hang out. And how long has the um, uh, franchise itself been around? 1998. It okay. initiated uh, just outside, I think, Philadelphia, um, Paul Green School of Music. And he started from there. So Jack Black stole the idea from you guys then, right? Actually, it's funny. And um, I don't quote me on this. I think okay. I'm right in this endeavor. But um, I believe that it was going to be a documentary about Paul Green. Okay. And then Hollywood got a hold of it. <laughs> right. And, uh, yeah, Thank I, I don't see... this is a good movie. Yeah, big time, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't see Jack Black being in a documentary, right? <laughs> Maybe someday. <laughs> yeah, later That'd in be an life. interesting one. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, so now talk to us. We're going to talk a little bit about the business model. We have some uh, additional questions, but uh, for our live listeners as well as your podcast, just let us know right now at the midpoint here, if you would, um, what's a point of contact for y'all? How would they find y'all online, offline, location? Point- sure. Um, I can give you three. Okay. Um, uh, first of all, we're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. We're on all those wonderful social media sites, Instagram. Um, our website is johnscreek.schoolofrock.com. Our email address is johnscreek at schoolofrock. Dot com and our phone number is 678-580-1882. Um, you can find us on Facebook at School of Rock Johns Creek. Um, okay. We're at the corner of Medlock and Abbott's Bridge Roads. We're pretty prominent. If you're driving up Medlock, which you're probably stuck in traffic, if you're heading up <laughs> into Suwannee. Take a music uh, yeah, break, yeah, right? Yeah, just, you know, in. you'll see our sign right there. Um, so um, we're in a really great location. And flow this slow listeners like myself, repeat the website one more time because sure. it's got some dots and some stuff. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, take a right. Yeah. Uh, johnscreek.schoolofrock.com. Okay, perfect. Um, I just want to remind your listeners, you're listening to Georgia Business Radio, your host, uh, Rich Casanova here, and we're speaking with uh, Christina Sims with the School of Rock, and we have uh, David... Um, uh, Eads. Eads. I have a, a buddy named Ames, so I was almost going to call you by his name, but Eads uh, was be speaking uh, momentarily uh, about Grow Solutions and how uh, David is helping those folks in the banking industry. But um, turning our attention back to uh, Christina, so your ideal student. Well, actually, rewind for a second and um, uh, kind of who are your students or uh, – you know, what's the range? And then I guess who is your ideal? Our youngest students are five. Our oldest students can be 105. Really? Yeah, you're not too late. to. So I could never, join in. Exactly. We teach adults. We had adult rehearsal last night. Okay. We have a gig on the 18th. <laughs> a gig. <laughs> nice a gig. It's fun. Yes. It is so much fun. Because uh, like I think most guys have always wanted to pick up that guitar or whatever, right? And mm-hmm. um, that would attract the women in theory whatever, if you knew what you were doing. Um, so is there kind of any... Um, I mean, what's your secret sauce without giving away too much of the formula? But... 
I mean, um, how does someone go in from not knowing what string is, is how many strings are on a guitar to, mm-hmm. to playing? Uh, I mean, is it learning the chords or what's the, I guess, unique about y'all? Well, it's, what's unique about us is that um, you don't just go into a lesson and then leave. That's a vacuum. You, you, right. you don't really have that goal in mind. Right. And um, our secret sauce is that we put the performance component in it. So you have that end goal. So we put on three shows a oh, year. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, our next show is January 31st at uh, the Tannery Ale House up in Buford. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. And um, our kids, you know, are unable to take what they've learned in their lesson and in their rehearsals right. and show what they've, you know, been working on for a season. Um, our approach isn't just, you know, it's 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 more collaborative okay um yes there are milestones our students need to reach and things that they need to learn in order for them to to perform and play their instrument okay um but we don't just have a one stock approach it's just like okay you know me knowing you as an you know as if i were your instructor you know i just getting to know you and finding out what is the best way for you to learn and you know it's not something you know if you don't if you don't learn all these riffs and chords right now well you know we'll get there okay um but it's 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 not so structured it's there's a little bit of a loose component to it and we've been talking about guitars but what other uh what range of instruments guitar bass keys vocals and drums okay Mm -hmm. and um and we mentioned the age range. So for our listeners as uh, business folks, professionals, so they could come in. Is there like a, uh, a set number of lessons or course? And are they, is it in a group setting or one-on-one instruction or what? It's on. So for our, our lessons are ongoing. You know, okay. it's, we do have season shows. So okay. our end of season show is kind of, it kind of breaks. It's, there's, the, there's that end of the season. Then we have our next season. Um, for adults, it's more of an ongoing approach. Okay. Um, so we just continue to work together and we perform more gigs than maybe our traditional younger students do. Right. I do have a house band and some, those are really? some of my, <laughs> yeah. So those are some of my best kids. They will blow you out of the water. They right. are amazing. I have a 12 year old. And he just, you, you look at him, you're like, holy crap, he's only right. been playing for over a year and he's just melting faces on stage. So, um, but uh, I kind of just digress there, yeah. but going back um, for, to the adults, um, yeah, which is, it's, it's just an all-inclusive kind of laid back community for adults. And we just, to give us, to keep us going, to give us that structured environment, we just continue to get out there. Not everybody can get five people together to play in a band. And so we kind of offer that opportunity for people to meet like-minded individuals and go out there and play and learn an instrument. So you have a house band like uh, Dancing with the Stars and uh, <laughs> you know I don't that watch show? that show. I you don't mean the late night show. Yeah, the late oh, night yeah, show. Yeah, or yeah. <laughs> what's another one where the microphone uh, they spin around in the chairs and um, the voice, the voice. Yeah, yeah. Ah. All those shows have like a, their go-to house band. But um, so uh, so talk to us about uh, instructors. Okay. Are you looking for instructors? Oh, or? I'm always looking for instructors. Okay. We're growing. Um, and my instructors, um, sometimes they gig. One of my instructors recently just got back from tour. So um, they're working instructors. They're out there. They're just kind of sharing their passion with the students and, you know, earning a paycheck when they're not touring. Right. Um, <laughs> but uh, so they're... Um, you know, they're into rock. They're into the same kind of music. Right. Um, they do know their stuff. I do require that my instructors, you know, have a background in theory, have taught for a while. Right. They enjoy teaching. I'm good with kids. Now, you mentioned rock, and obviously that's, you know, uh, part of the name, School of Rock. But um, are there styles or ranges of music? Can people come in and learn, you know, classical, jazz, or is the emphasis on you know, rock? The core component is primarily yeah. rock. Okay, yeah. There are peripheral uh, yeah. genres that we'll touch into. Um, Motown, jazz, like oh, yeah. you mentioned. Um, we get a little creative with okay, it, too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We're considering maybe a Blues Brothers oh, uh, nice. show next season. Yeah. I was actually texting my music director last <laughs> night about that. I was like, ooh, Blues Brothers. That right, sounds yeah. kind of fun. So you mentioned like these shows, the gigs. So is it just for the um, the younger students or for the uh, the older crowd as well, is that kind of they build up toward, towards a performance, a live performance? Everyone. Okay. So, um, and, and the the performance is tailored. So our, our rookies, which is our five to right. seven-year-old kids, you know, th- we get them 
you know, we recognize who we're working with. The object of the game is just to get them on stage and just getting them to just perform a oh, song. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, if, if um, our house band usually plays with them, okay, so yeah. it's, it's not like right. you just watch, see a bunch of, you know, deer it's in a headlight like kids on, on stage. Drums um, on nervous, yeah. But it, it, it gives them, you know, they're, they're learning the building blocks for the next step, which is Rock 101, and those kids are between the ages of 8 and 11, and those kids are learning, um, they're actually learning songs and performing them on stage, but they're with an instructor. And then our performance students, technically, uh, traditionally about 12 to 18 years old, those kids on stage by themselves, now with an instructor, putting on a production. Wow. And we don't uh, we don't put our kids in bands. Like I said, our house band yeah. is our only band. Okay. Um, and these kids learn to work with each other. It's kind of akin to a play. They're right. shuffled in and out sure. depending on what they, you know, what they can kind of tackle and grapple. Yeah. And yeah, their level. Yeah. Um, you know, if they're on lead guitar or third guitar. Um, but we... You know, and, and by virtue of them not being in a band, um, we can challenge them or give them as much as they can handle. Sure. Okay, and one last uh, question here. Um, uh, I've heard you offer professional team building courses. Yes. That would be of interest to our uh, business uh, audience. Tell us about that. Exactly. Um, so this is a new initiative that we're launching in my studio. There's so many, um, you know, mid-level and, and Fortune 500 companies in this area, and I know a lot of them are, you know, looking for ways for them to get, you know, some of maybe their executives together. And not everybody plays golf. Right. And um, I think the ropes courses and the, the trust circles or whatever, you know, maybe that's going out <laughs> with the 90s. Um, and and um, I, I was reading in the Harvard Business Review actually this morning that um, there's this uh, culinary approach to team building. And I'm like, because everybody eats. Yeah. And... Um, but so music is so prevalent and, you know, why not get a group of people together learning music? It's tons of fun. We've done it before. You know, we get them, you know, working on a song together. And by the end of the day, you guys have put something together. You've made something together. Right. And um, it's just a lot of fun. And, and it's it's low. Um, it, it, it's 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 um, really it can be a stress reliever. It, and yeah. It probably uh, inspires you as well as kind of keeps you alert. It you is know? inspirational. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, um, yeah, speaking of that, of like the team building, we've had uh, folks in from, uh, I think it's, they're in Alpharetta, the food kitchen. Um, and, or the, uh, was it the, uh, they do a food truck. Uh, they have about 16 food trucks, but they have a, a commercial kitchen there in Alpharetta and they do the team building right there on site. And it's a pretty phenomenal event. So I, I, I definitely, uh, maybe I see maybe uh, pro business rock. You know, we could team up with you guys. Yeah, I would totally do that. I yeah. think that would be great. Right? You know, it's not too early in the morning, man. We just bring a gaggle of my instructors in here. Yeah. We had a guy in a while back that was a motivational speaker, traveling around the world, and he was um, part of his bit was playing a banjo, and so he was playing a little bit in the studio. We had uh, our legal Atlanta legal experts. I got that used to be in the music industry and sang a tune on the uh, show. So I don't know. Um, uh, we'll 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 have to put our crack team of research. Uh, uh, crew together and see what we can come up it, with. It's just fun. Yeah. It's so fun and and low key and it, it, everybody. I swear, you could probably find somebody that like just like you said. He used to play guitar or banjo yeah, yeah. or tambourine that loved to sing. Right. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, Christina, um, pleasure having you here in the Thank studio you. and learning about the uh, School of Rock in Johns Creek. And one more time, the uh, website or point of contact for you. Uh, johnscreek.schoolofrock.com and we're located at the corner of Medlock and Abbotsbridge Road. Our phone number is six seven eight five eight zero one eight eight two. Perfect. Well, um, we'll get the word out on our live feed as well as our um, social media platforms, our YouTube channel, and um, our podcast and all that good stuff. So uh, thanks again for being on the show. Um, Hang tight for a minute here. We um, now turn our attention back to David uh, Eads, and you're the um, uh, founder and CEO of Grow Solutions, providing sales and enablement solutions for the financial services industry. Um, You bring to the market the first solution of its kind, I guess, as a support desktop. a native in your mobile website accounting solutions, uh, and you're also an uh, industry speaker. Well, yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> been, yeah, so... Well, subject matter experts, so people probably look to you to uh, consult with them on, on these? Well, yeah, that's, that's actually how we got started. Um, we, we also have a consulting company, uh, Mobile Strategy Partners, that is okay. the parent company of Grove Solutions. And uh, in the process of over the last seven years or so, helping banks figure out what they should do to, to help grow, we saw that really there wasn't a lot of focus on actually adding customers or selling products to existing customers. Most banks do a great job of helping you move your money from your checking to your savings, right. 
but that doesn't help the bottom line of the bank. It says you were also an early employee at Tea Leaf Technology. Mm-hmm. Tell me yeah. about that. Well, that was the Tea Leaf was all about helping uh, an organization's website, helping to make sure that it works better and to see if if customers are having a problem. To kind of opti- optimize Op- and then absolutely. monitor and see absolutely. The- absolutely, absolutely. So we're using our skills that we've done in, in previous companies with helping banks understand how their you know how they're operating or how their websites are operating, and actually providing a great solution with all of that built in right. that makes it easier for customers to sign up to the bank. Because look, the the process today, if you were to go and try to pull out your phone and try to open an account at a bank. If you could do it, it would probably take you 30 minutes to an hour. Wow. If you could do it. And uh, the status quo is that 80% of the people who try actually give up. Sure. And so we knew how to do it better. So we created a product that we could just go sell to banks. They don't have to figure it out themselves. They can install it. And we've reduced that abandonment rate from 80% down to about 35%. Wow, that's huge. Which is on par with online. And we've taken the process from 30 minutes or more down to four minutes or less. That's, so, that's I huge. mean, the bottom and our customers are growing like crazy. One customer, uh, their growth in the first quarter was 17 percent. Wow. As, as, using our <laughs> solution and, one, and other things. One quarter. In one quarter. Wow. So, I mean, it, it's amazing when you're losing customers left and right who are trying to do business with you. Just not losing those customers uh, can have a huge impact on your business. Well, a lot of times it's like... Um, uh, you don't really, it's hard to monitor unless you know what you're doing. That's right. Um, who's engaging and then walks away from the platform, right? That's right. Um, it says also, despite your executive duties, you uh, make time to write code weekly. That doesn't really sound like a hobby to me. <laughs> 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 well, it's called being an entrepreneur, yeah. right? You know, at the end of the day, um, well, it's, I've seen this firsthand with large organizations, small organizations, if the CEO doesn't know how to do the really important jobs in yeah. an organization, the CEO is going to have bad judgment. So it's really important for me to stay really close to the, you know, the nitty gritty of what's getting done, talking to my customers as well as working with my staff on, you know, giving me a piece where I can't mess things up, but I'm down deep into the into the weeds so that I can really see the breadth of my business and oh, yeah. help help make good decisions. I mean, no offense, but um, it, it sounds. Um, a little more entertaining to grab up some drumsticks up, up at there. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> School of rock than writing I can code, promise yeah. you it is. <laughs> and in fact, I would love to do that. I've, I've got team, the folks on my team, a lot of them are musicians. Oh, okay, we yeah. would totally love to do that. That absolutely. would be great. I mean, yeah, it is pretty, that would be a really cool event and entertaining for the people. Even, you know, the rest of the um, company or their associates or their family members to kind of show up at that gig. And here it is, you know, the grow band takes the stage yeah. or whatever, right? You know, yeah. grow solutions, uh, GSB, grow solutions yeah. band. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll work on that, yeah. Um, okay, so t- t- Grow Solutions. So, um, you know, for those just tuning in, uh, when you're at a, an event and someone says, David, what's uh, Grow Solutions? Oh, How we you- help banks sell more products. It, it's that easy. I okay. mean, so we sell to banks and credit unions, and we help uh, we help them with their mobile, digital, online, even in branch, help them s- streamline that process for opening new accounts or adding products. And so um, that kind of maybe answer my question. So the focus or the emphasis exclusively or just the, um, the main emphasis is in uh, establishing a new account, but not like their mobile banking once I've established my account for... Right, right, right. right exactly. So it's opening a new account or adding a new product. So it okay. could be you're in, you have a checking account at your bank, but you also would like to apply for an auto loan. Okay. Or you are interested in a mortgage or home equity loan or a credit card, whatever. It's... Being able to, you know, to uh, add a new product, which ultimately helps grow the bottom line in the bank. And an- another really important part of the banks talk about cross-selling and upselling like any other business. Right. But the reality is most institutions don't have a way to respond to the call to action. So if you send out an email blast to say, hey, apply for this credit card, a lot of them don't have a great way for people to actually respond via mobile, especially oh, yeah. to, to actually take up that offer. So, I mean, we're looking at it, and we're like, it's a no-brainer. The right. ROI is off the charts. Um, so from a pro-business standpoint, um, I'm thinking, uh, yes or no, a challenge uh, some of the banks' institutions would have is uh, security issues. And, Absolutely. Right? So, Absolutely. I mean, how do you all address that or what? Um, uh, well, that, that, that's actually a lot of uh, what makes our solution effective okay. is that – 
it's really, really hard to balance security with right. usability, okay. yeah. with making it easy to use. Right. So, uh, you know, my team, almost everybody in the leadership of this company has uh, 20 years or more uh, fintech experience, working with banks, credit unions, whatever. So we've really redesigned the process to make sure we have the best security in the okay. industry, but that it's still easy to use. Yeah. Yeah. And speaking of fintech, um, in recent years, Atlanta's become <clears throat> known as a fintech capital. Yeah. Uh, startup mecca. I mean, what do you attribute that to, or uh, how have you seen that the progression of that? Yeah, well, and you know, one my first thought on that is that a lot of folks, when they think fintech in Atlanta, they right. think just card processing, right, right, which yeah. is a huge part of the industry. Yeah. But actually, one of the reasons I'm here and I'm in fintech is uh, because of the mobile banking industry and and the digital banking technologies. Folks like Check Free, right. which became Fiserv, and FIS has a presence. Jack wow. Henry has a presence. So most of the software that banks use in the United States and credit unions as well, uh, a lot of that is is headquartered or major operations are here in Atlanta. So you know a huge. I mean, Wall Street is what people think of when right, they right. think of finance. Yeah. And that may be where a lot of the deals get done, but the software that runs that stuff is done right here in Atlanta. Speaking of that, I was um, reading an article a while back that the uh, the founder or the principal owner of the New York Stock Exchange yeah, is I see. right, yeah, yeah, right I here see. in Sandy Springs. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. That, I don't, I mean, yeah, I they mean, bought I, they bought the New York Stock Exchange. That's bizarre. And you're next. Yeah. But am I missing something there? I mean, how do you – I didn't know that was for sale or that – uh, Everything's for sale. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, that's true. I mean, no, that's, I mean you got me on that. Everybody one, but, has their price, <laughs> but uh, that's just mind-boggling. I yeah. mean, uh, New York. I mean, the financial uh, uh, epicenter of the world, basically, right? But a stock exchange is software these days, really. Okay. So, I mean, that, that, I mean, they start an intercontinental exchange. I mean, I don't, I don't know anybody there. <laughs> yeah, right. But, but you know, my understanding. I mean, it's a, it was a, a stock exchange of other stuff. Right. They made enough money and they, they consolidated and bought the New York <laughs> Stock Exchange and Euronext. Uh huh. That's bizarre. I mean, life must it's be good. It's the power of Atlanta, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and so, uh, speaking of Atlanta, I mean, what's your um, uh, reach? Is mo- is mostly the largest percentage of your bulk of your uh, business and clients here? In Atlanta or the Southeast, or um... I, well, actually, we have no customers in Atlanta. We we actually <laughs> sell all across the country, and right. we're looking to grow internationally. And we operate. We have employees across the, the United States as well as internationally. Wow! And uh, we do a lot of work in Latin America. My CTO is actually in England. Um, we have a, a lot of folks in Canada. Um, but uh, it, Atlanta is a great place to do this because of the fintech the roots base, yeah. and the airport. Oh, so time. we can, you know, it's the center of the universe as far right. as I'm concerned. No matter where I go, I have to come through Atlanta. Well, that's one of the reasons why we selected um, this particular location in Buckhead is we can see the Marta, the gold line right mm-hmm. out our window. And we've had people fly in and uh, come in the studio and from Washington and Houston and other parts of the country. So it is pretty, uh, we kind of sometimes take, for, take it for granted. But um, so what's next for uh uh, well, actually, before we talk about this, uh, let's give a little teaser for um, how would find people find out about you. And, uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Well, the easiest is our website, which okay. is growbanking.com. So that's grow, G-R-O, B-A-N-K-B-A-N-K-I-N-G. <laughs> spell <laughs> growbanking.com. G-R-O yeah. is, is how you spell grow. Okay, so yeah. there's no W in it. No grow, growbanking.com. I mean, that almost kind of describes your service right there. Absolutely. I mean, if we I'm help banks grow. It's that simple. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you mentioned banks, you mentioned credit unions. Yeah. Is there any other sandboxes you play in? or um... For the most part, retail banking. Okay. Uh, we're moving into commercial banking as well, which is also an area that needs a lot of help from a software perspective. Um, and, you know, a huge part of any financial institution, a huge part of their asset base is commercial lending right. and commercial relationships. And uh, that's been overlooked. So we're moving into that space really quickly. And so from a... Uh, listener's perspective when you talk about banks or you know the banking industry um it again is your sweet spot or i know you're probably not limited to but is there kind of a uh a a cap or cutoff point where the you know the largest institutions kind of have in-house like we had um on tuesday we did our buckhead business show which is sponsored by the buckhead business administration or uh, association and we had um uh the uh, what's his title but he's at primary primary bank here at mm-hmm. Georgia Primary Bank. So we, there's a lot of um, local institutions, um, uh, the private bank of Buckhead. Absolutely. All the way up to Wells Fargo and beyond. So Absolutely. So so we're not really focused on, I mean, we, in the past, we have done business with the largest banks uh, in the country. Right. 
Uh, that's not our focus because we know those guys like to build their own. And right. frankly, their sales cycles are, you know, you know, 48 <laughs> Forever, months. Yeah. You know, I, I've, you know, I did a deal with Bank of America once that took yeah. four years. Wow. So, uh, you know, we, we would love to have their business, but we're not focused on it. But we are, we've, we've established channel relationships that allow us to go to the very smallest institutions, whether they're banks or credit unions. So we can serve any size small bank as well as, you know, up to the top five banks in the, in the country. We, we can support anybody in that range. Well, and for those regional banks um, and, uh, like you said, credit unions or the private banks and so forth, it's probably a hand-in-glove fit because Absolutely. it, you know, doesn't behoove them to – bring on all those resources and, and team and so forth when they can, they already have you kind of provided as turnkey. That's right. And, and more importantly, as we come up with new innovations to streamline the process, make security better, they don't have to go and implement it to compete with their, you know, they just get an upgrade from us. Right. And then they don't have to go and redo it or, you know. Compete. And I was going to mention earlier with your experience in uh, coding and your uh, background in website optimization, so forth. Um, uh, sometimes I do kind of think about our site. It's got a lot of moving parts and pieces to it. Mm -hmm. We think it's pretty exciting, but you kind of, uh, I guess there's ways to find out, but um, you can determine where kind of traffic is landing on that site, right? Right. And uh, where the engagement's at. That's right. And uh, so maybe, could you stay after class and uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. help me with that? Yeah. <laughs> Google Analytics Google is your friend. Yes. <laughs> right. oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, Learn what a bounce rate is. Yeah, I need yeah. to dial into that. And where and how long they stay at a certain That's spot right. and all that mm -hmm. stuff. That's yeah. right. Okay. Um, so, uh, so finally, let's talk about what's next for Grow Solutions. What do you project um, on the horizon here? Well, as I was mentioning, going to other lines of business, uh, we, we've got customers across the country doing uh, checking accounts, savings accounts, CDs, IRAs, um, you know, and doing s credit cards, simple loans, stuff like that. Um, we're moving more to really optimize the process for mortgage, which is a much more complicated transaction, uh, as well as commercial lending. That's going to be our focus for, for 2016. Oh, okay. And, um, uh, so two last questions here, I guess, uh, what's maybe like a challenge in your business that you kind of face? And then finally, how do people find out about you? Yeah, well, growbanking.com is the easiest way to find out about us. No, but I mean, other than if I'd never heard of you, I guess I'm uh, a bank in Wichita or in uh, yeah. Houston. Yeah, so we, we do... How do you find your customers, yeah, we, I guess? Actually, for us, it comes back to events in your original okay. question. For us, we found that the best way to reach a community like the banking community uh -huh. is to go to events and to be frequent speakers on topics that matter, that aren't salesy, that right. are about something that matters that we, we know something about. Okay. Uh, and for us, that's been really effective. And So um, like uh, trade shows or conferences? It, exactly. Conventions. What about Salesforce or some... Um, uh, or you prefer, you you probably, it seems like you've gotten more, gleaned more from a that personal interaction, right? Well, absolutely. And we, we do direct sales. We do webinars. In fact, we did a fantastic webinar yesterday, um, you know, where we had, you know, what, 40 brands on the, wow. 40, 40 institutions wow. on there. And, um, talk about leverage. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and, you know, we, we, we've got a, a direct sales force as well as channel okay. sales partners. And, um, so, you know, that we'll take the money wherever it comes in. Okay. And then the, uh, First part of my two-parter was, uh, what about challenges with your business? Huh? Well, uh, the challenge is getting bankers to change the way they've done things. You yeah. know, um, for example, one bank who I won't name, <laughs> uh, we went and visited with them talking about this process. And um, as I mentioned earlier, the stat that 80% of people on mobile phones typically, you know, abandon trying to open an account. Right. Well, this bank used Google Analytics, and uh, they found that their rate was 92%. Oh, my God. Wow. And so what they ended up doing was they just detected that, um, that they have a mobile device, and so they just show a page that says, please come to our branch. Oh, my. Wow. So, they, <laughs> you know, so that's an example of folks who, you know, institutions that don't get it, and they're driving, pe you know, they're driving customers away, right. and you know, if you're listening and you, you, that, that's something <laughs> you know that who you, you might are, do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know who you are. Uh, you might want to consider a different approach because it's the, the, the marketplace is really becoming competitive and the way we did things 20 years ago right. is not going to help you survive as we have more millennials and right. the big banks are coming and eating the smaller banks lunch. Uh, that's almost a good kind of opener. I'm sure you, uh, work that into your, uh, webinars and your speaking engagements is, um, if you're in the banking industry and you've looked at your analytics and found that uh, 
uh, a lot of folks are, uh, you know, dialing out, if you will, right? Mm-hmm. Abandoning. <laughs> and abandoning. Um, then they may be engaged with y'all. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, we can install relatively quickly, faster than any other solution in the marketplace. Yeah. And so, you know, you, we can also help in the branch as well. So really? that, that's actually been a huge part of the benefit is making the experience in the branch much more interactive and, and, and friendly as opposed to going and sitting in a room for an hour. Right. So you'll fly into Seattle and run the, um, the teller uh, booth for a while? Not me personally. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I'll sell the yeah. software to, to yeah. the institution to yeah. do it. Maybe to, uh, to um, Rome or Greece or uh, somewhere, yeah. Yeah, uh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, speaking of Greece, maybe that's another topic. We'll, uh, yeah, <laughs> I can't fix that problem. Right, exactly, yeah. <laughs> that's beyond, yeah, mobile device, yeah. Uh, well, David, a pleasure having you, uh, you. here on the show. And um, uh, thanks again to Christina for joining us. Um, thank you. Absolutely. So, and I see some synergy between y'all, and I want to thank our listeners for tuning in once again to uh, Georgia Business Radio. Your host, uh, Rich Casanova. We'll see you next time on the radio.